als Hirte höre ich gerne nicht, wenn man von schwarzen Schafen spricht. A leading Catholic pastor with a great sense of humor, who is also no stranger to self-mockery, Karl Cardinal Lehmann, Bishop of Mainz. For 20 years he was the chairman of the German Bishops' Conference. His canny and humorous manner has brought him recognition in many parts of society, including the carnival clubs. In Aachen, he received the renowned award for public figures who've distinguished themselves in the cause against deadly seriousness. But the Cardinal, whose popularity is only matched by that of TV celebrities, recently suffered life-threatening cardiac arrhythmia. On health grounds, he will resign as the chairman of the German Bishops' Conference on February the 18th. The end of Lehmann's leadership will be the end of an era for the Catholic Church in Germany. For 20 years, he negotiated with representatives of almost every social group. He mediated in arguments amongst the German bishops themselves, and he presented the position of German Catholics to the Vatican. Often, he found a compromise. His words were clear, but not aggressive. It has always been the bishop's goal to have a church that played a central part in society. I think as long as a church, in whatever form it may be, is a people's church, even if it isn't one in terms of numbers, it just has to deal with the problems affecting the people in society. It mustn't withdraw into a niche where it is comfortable and where it is amongst its own kind. It's important for the church to expose itself to conflict. When Lehmann gives up his chairmanship of the bishops' conference, he will still be the bishop of Mainz. Pontifex, the Latin word for bishop, means bridge builder, and that is how he has always seen his task, as a bridge builder, as a mediator. Lehmann was born in Siegmaringen, in Swabia, in southern Germany, on the 16th of May, 1936. His father was a village teacher, the Catholic faith is deeply rooted in his family. The education at St. Fidelis Boys Grammar School in Siegmaringen was no less Catholic than his family upbringing. The environment of his childhood was to shape the person he has become. At the University of Freiburg, he started by studying philosophy and then went on to theology. The Archbishop of Freiburg sent the young theologian to study in Rome. For seven years he lived in the Collegium Germanicum et Hungaricum, a nurturing ground for future bishops. He studied the philosophy of Martin Heidegger intensively. In his doctorate he confronted existentialism, a worldview that is no longer shaped by Christianity, but by the notion that we've been thrown into existence. It would be another year before Munich's Cardinal Döpfner ordained him into the priesthood. I think, considering we were in the presence of great spiritual masters, not least when we went on retreats, we also had a great spiritual leader who died recently at the age of 107, and to us he was an incredibly wise man, and considering that, we asked very matter-of-factly, are you able and do you want to live a celibate life? I was only ordained as a priest when I was 27 years old. I had enough time to ask myself that question. I did feel that that wouldn't be easy for me. But I thought I could acquiesce in it in the interest of the overall task, which fulfills me on a human level. In 1967, he was awarded a doctorate in theology. But philosophy, which means the love of wisdom, has remained his great love throughout his life. He was there in Rome during the 1960s when the Second Vatican Council was being held. It was a time of great upheaval within the church. For Karl Lehmann, who was then a young priest, the Second Vatican Council was the bridge between the Church's age-old traditions and its opening to modern society.
the church said goodbye to many old customs. During his time as chairman of the German bishops' conference, he always stayed true to the spirit of openness and of welcome. After he returned to Germany in 1968, he chose an academic career. He taught systematic theology in Mainz and Freiburg. It was a pleasant time for him. He was in touch with many young people and was able to use his academic freedom to confront questions about the meaning of life. As a professor, he soon became an internationally esteemed authority. He was very popular with his students. When he was consecrated Bishop of Mainz, they threw a party in his honor. It was difficult for him to say goodbye. Yes, that's really one of the hardest things for me because I very much enjoyed working with the students and that's something I'm probably going to miss. Karl Lehmann was consecrated Bishop of Mainz in 1983. Then, 47, he took on duties of an ecclesiastical office. The papal memorandum talks of the bishop's useful intelligence. After his years as professor and philosopher, it was time for practical commitment. God had the anteil gegeben am Priestertum Christi for the Mainz Cathedral chapter, the liberal professor from Freiburg was their preferred candidate. Many here know him from his time at the city's own university. In autumn 2008, Lehmann will celebrate his Silver Jubilee as bishop. Since 1983, he has been the pontifex of Mainz building bridges to the people and helping them with their worries. He has become God's manager. Every day he attends to an enormous amount of work. But despite this, he still always has time for people. Direct human interaction is something he holds particularly dear. Catholics in the Mainz diocese revere their folksy bishop. The internationally esteemed theologian and philosopher is a popular pastor. Four years after he was consecrated bishop, a further important phase in his life began. Fulda, 1987, the autumn plenary session of the German Bishops' Conference. 51-year-old Karl Lehmann was elected to become the conference's new chairman. A further big job was now awaiting him. After his consecration as Bishop of Mainz, it was his second definitive step towards public accountability. He took a clear stance right from the start. During the mid-80s, conservative clerics proclaimed AIDS as God's punishment for human lust. Lehmann, recently elected the chairman of the conference, had quite different things to say. I'm particularly impressed when I speak with doctors who personally look after people infected with AIDS, when they express their distress and their colleagues' distress. And I admire the many people who are here today with such solidarity and great desire to help, and that is something we simply cannot stay away from. During his first press conference as the chairman of the German Bishops' Conference, he also said he in no way saw himself as a kind of Pope of Germany. But because of his openness to the world and his modern attitude, his relationship to the Vatican now became difficult. When Pope John Paul II came to Germany, he was welcomed by the Bishop of Mainz as the elected head of the German Catholics. But the relationship remained strained and distant for years. Lehmann distanced himself from the visitor from Rome and his entourage. 
It was no coincidence that the long-standing head of the German Bishops' Conference was deliberately overlooked for almost 15 years by Pope John Paul II when he was appointing cardinals. To his followers in Germany, Lehmann was always successful in combining the church's tradition with progressive policies. Many hoped Karl Lehmann would be the key to a modern Catholicism in Germany. The Bishop of Mainz became a figure in public life who attracted a lot of attention. He also managed to get business people and politicians to listen to what he had to say. He is tirelessly trying to communicate with representatives of the most diverse social groups. After a long period of suspicion, the climate between the church and trade unions has also improved. The man of the cloth is invited to trade union meetings. But how influential is the head of the bishops' conference really? I don't have too many concrete means of influencing people, but what I can do is prepare the ground for discussion, determine the climate to some extent, setting ethical impulses, perhaps reminding people of standards and bringing standards back to where they should be. In the end, there is quite a lot we can do. During the 90s, Lehmann repeatedly and in no uncertain terms criticized the social policies of Chancellor Kohl's government, but nevertheless, the bridge to the two Christian Democrat parties remained intact. January 2000, Bishop Lehmann was invited to attend the private conference of the Bavarian Christian Social Union, the Christian Democrat sister party. He was asked if he would appeal to the conscience of the Christian Democrats. That's something I'll do in a private conversation. We won't do that here. <laughs> Part of political discourse is dealing with the media. Here, too, Lehmann was true to his word when he announced in 1983 that as a bishop he would approach politicians and journalists. No other German bishop has ever been so competent in his handling of the media. If important topics are the subject matter, he won't deny any camera team an interview request. Not even when he has only slept three hours the night before and he still greets the camera assistant just as warmly as the potentially influential editor. But there's one thing he can't stand, the irrelevance of many a talk show out there. This genre, this type of program, not like it's done here, but as it's done in many cases, is something I'm really not a fan of. I can't stand this pomposity. It disgusts me when people talk about everything without knowing anything about it. That's really something I hate. With his work in the diocese and as chairman of the German Bishops' Conference, Lehmann doesn't have much time left for his private life. He only rarely permits himself to slow down. Here he's on a crab cutter in the North Sea. Together with his secretary and a long-standing good friend, he's taking a short time out. This is not a time to talk about work. The bishop as gentleman. Here, the chief pastor of his diocese is allowed to be a philosopher again and dwell on his thoughts. God's manager on the subject of modern leadership structures. Flat hierarchies are not useful to anybody, and that is something that's now become clearer in business. And that's why both things are important to me. Very close communication and a corresponding responsibility. And I'm happy when people really accept this responsibility, which is sometimes a problem, because they sometimes don't. And when something is not going the way we agreed, then I don't have a problem with intervening and saying, that's not the way we wanted it. In the 90s, there was a particular business that occupied Lehmann a great deal. The argument with Pope John Paul II about conflict counselling in church institutions for pregnant women. The subject cost him a lot of time and nerves. What was the issue? 
Abortion is only legal in Germany when the pregnant woman participates in a counseling session before terminating. The Catholic advice centers are supposed to counsel in favor of their pro-life stance. But the women got their counseling certificate anyway, a document denounced by conservative churchmen as a license to kill. The argument about this within the church was to last several years. Again and again, Lehmann tried to build a bridge to the Vatican. Like many liberal Catholics, he saw the Catholic advice centers as the last chance to get women to change their minds. But his arguments fell on deaf ears. In January 1998, Lehmann published Pope John Paul II's letter containing the request to cease issuing counseling certificates. A reporter asked him whether the conflict of conscience and the defeat had caused him to consider resigning as head of the bishop's conference. No, that's not something that I considered, because I'm definitely not going to jump ship when the going gets tough. Although Lehmann kept talking about the Pope's request at the press conference, he doubtless understood the Vatican's unequivocal message. The Pope's letter to his revered brother bishops was met with complete incomprehension, particularly amongst committed laypeople. That same day, Lehmann tried to build a bridge to the employees in the counseling centers. He knows how tough it is to explain this argument to them. But the sympathy shown to him does him good. Rome, three years later, a sensation. The Bishop of Mainz will now be created a cardinal after all. For years, his name was under discussion. The fact that Lehmann was passed over time and again was taken as a sign of Rome's disapproval. Polish bishops are said to have moved John Paul II to consider the long-standing chairman of the German Bishops' Conference after all. On the 21st of February 2001, the late Pope ordained 44 new cardinals, four of them from Germany. Shortly after 12 o'clock, Karl Lehmann stepped in front of the throne of the Pontifex Maximus. John Paul II asked Lehmann to extend his welcome to the people of Mainz. The bishop kissed the ring of the Holy Father, something not every cardinal did that day. Four years later, the newly appointed cardinals, along with all the other cardinals, would elect Josef Ratzinger to be the new pope. More than 50,000 believers were there for the ceremonial appointment of the cardinals. Alongside 300 pilgrims from Mainz alone, well-known politicians and church members also attended. Amongst them, the state premier of North Rhine-Westphalia, Wolfgang Clement, and the former president of the Protestant church in Germany, Manfred Koch. In their quest for ecumenism, Lehmann and Koch have become good friends. The newly created cardinal was the star of the day, but he was as modest as ever. For me, it's a day of joy and a day of encouragement. Regarding all of the things I've been doing over the past years, I feel quite well understood. Even though some things were then decided differently from how I would have liked, I fought for what I believed, and I was always aware that I didn't have the last word. Humility on a day like this, not a hint of triumph. But the cardinal is enjoying being in the city where he studied for seven years. Rome, four years later. After long-suffering Pope John Paul II died in Rome on the 2nd of April, 2005. The funeral service in St. Peter's. 115 cardinals from all around the world gathered in the Sistine Chapel to elect a successor. 
amongst them also the Bishop of Mainz, Karl Lehmann. Strictly shielded from the outside world, they had to stay together until they had come to an agreement. After just 24 hours, the sensation was complete. The Chilean Cardinal Estevez announced, we have a new Pope. Habemus Papam. Dominum Josephum. Sancte Romane Ecclesiae Cardinalem Ratzinger. Hundreds of thousands cheer the former prefect of the Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith, Josef Ratzinger. Cardinals Ratzinger and Lehmann both experienced the Second Vatican Council in Rome when they were young men. Ratzinger as the advisor to Cologne's Cardinal Frings, Lehmann as a staff member of the significant theologian Karl Rahner. Ratzinger is the first German Pope for almost 500 years. Cari fratelli e sorelle, Dear brothers and sisters, says the new pope, the cardinals have elevated me, a simple man, to be a worker in the Lord's vineyard. As originally Pope John Paul II had promised, the new pope came to Cologne in summer 2005 for World Youth Day. The number of participants and their enthusiasm come as a surprise even to the head of the German Bishops' Conference. Around one million young people from all around the world would later celebrate Mass with the Pope and the bishops. <laughs> Cardinal Lehmann is happy about the young people's enthusiasm. What is important to him now is to bind them permanently to the Christian faith. No easy task, but the Catholic laity have been firmly on his side for a long time. Working for the children and young people is something that's close to the cardinal and bishop's heart. Here he's attending the opening celebration of a Catholic girls' high school gymnasium in Bensheim. The Bishop of Mainz never lost his confidence that young people could be one for the faith. The church today, for Lehmann the priest, a constant balancing act between the rapid development of modern society and the stubbornness of conservative church dignitaries. Intellectual honesty has never allowed Lehmann the philosopher to be satisfied with simplified truths. The people in his diocese and many others appreciate his courage to strive for an equilibrium. Bearing witness to the faith, taking a stand for secular issues too. That's why Lehmann has so much credibility with German Catholics. He's not scared to say what he thinks about the political issues of the day. He unequivocally denounced the U.S. government for the Iraq war. He criticizes the U.S. prison camp at Guantanamo Bay, where law does not rule. Again and again, he has urged Islam to clarify its relationship to violence. In a newspaper interview, he addresses his own church. We have to show our flag to an arrogant neoliberalism, the social market economy needed to be defended. He looked for and found a dialogue with politicians, such as here with the state premier of Lower Saxony, Christian Wolff, at the Ecumenical Church Congress in Berlin in 2003. A private audience with Pope Benedict. Although the two church dignitaries have very different personalities, they're on familiar terms and have a good personal relationship. Without the blessing of the new pope, Cardinal Lehmann would hardly have been elected leader of the German Bishops' Conference for the fourth time in Fulda in 2005. The Bishop of Mainz, Karl Lehmann, does not only have friends amongst the conservatives in the German Bishops' Conference. Despite this, they voted him to be chairman for the fourth time since 1987. It's nice to achieve concrete effects, but success is, as Martin Buber already said, not a word in the dictionary of the Bible. 
We are happy if we are lucky enough that our actions bear fruit and are blessed. But that's not the crucial factor. As the leader of the German Bishops' Conference, Lehmann always stood up for a church that was firmly based in people's lives. With patience and a lot of skill, he has successfully managed to build bridges, including between conservative and the progressive Catholics. Now he's giving up his position as chairman of the conference for health reasons. It won't be easy to find a successor who will be as good a bridge builder as Lehmann has been.